we're talking about the importance of taking your own uh, meteorological records because, well, I think the people at the uh, weather station and weather channel are smoking crack sometimes, but got to take the opportunity to show you some of the new babies here. And uh, I got a Muscovy mother in them there, and one of the Swedish ducks, she's kind of taken on as an adoptive mother with them. And there go Barbie and the chicks there. But what I'm talking about is, many of you might have seen a video I put out yesterday. And on that video, I said my swales had taken on an inch and a half of rain. And if you look at that video now, you'll see that I changed it to two and a half inches of rain. And I just went inside and I checked what the uh, weather guesser says. The weather guesser says we got three quarters of an inch yesterday. Now, I think anybody that lives near Azle or Lake, uh, Lakeside, Texas, which is kind of the area I'm in, would tell you that these people are smoking crack. But I like to prove it, and I like to prove it to myself. Now, I know darn well when my swales are empty and they fill, we got right at an inch of rain. And when they overflow, we got more. As I did the calculations, it's been proven time and time again. Every time we get an inch of rain, they're full. We get a little bit more. They, go, they weep over the sills. So yesterday, as you saw in the video, they ran over the sills. And boy, I'll tell you what, look what it's doing to the land. The land is gorgeous. We can keep another month of this before we hit the dry season without having any you know, terrible storms uh, as far as tornadoes and hail. We're going to have a great year. Anyway, what I like to do to measure rain, instead of a little bitty cup, is use something of significant sample size that has zero catchment. That is a kiddie pool. Five feet in diameter. There's no catchment above it. There's no way for water to get up and over into it. This is an actual sampling of the water that fell yesterday. Let's take a look at it. And as you can see, it's right at two and a half inches. And moving it, if anything makes it deeper, that's about the shallowest spot. Because the, the, the pool does have some uneven contours underneath it. But there's a minimum depth in this pool of two and a half inches. So three quarters of an inch is my foot. Um, and this is important. This is part of your observation as you get ready to do major installations of things like earthworks that you uh, get some real hard data, in my opinion, to what you're designing to. Because just because the uh, Weather Channel or the NOAA or whatever says something doesn't mean that's what is a typical rain event a heavy rain event or a large scale rain event in your area. And that's one of the ways that I uh, determine things. Like I said, the other way is, you know, I can calculate how much water comes off that roof based on how big it is and how many inches of rain it gets. It's a really easy, simple calculation. If I put a gutter on there and I put it into a tank that's empty and I calculate the water that goes in there based on that formula backwards, I know how much rain we got. And there's uh, very few ways around that and uh, I don't know sometimes where these people get their numbers but to be fair you know I could have got two and a half inches of rain and uh, Azel is actually several miles up the road they might have got three quarters up there I don't know um, you know Lakeside might have got an inch like I said I might have got a really heavy cell in the middle but again I want to know what I'm getting I want my own data and uh, nine dollar kitty pull from Walmart gives you better data than the uh, computer screen ever will that's it for today. Catch up with you later.